You might still have some double XP time left, but it's time to prepare for RuneScape's upcoming boss, Osseus. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Osseus is a boss that has been teased for quite some time now, and it's finally coming to the game on the 28th of May, 2024. Requirement-wise, you're going to need to start a quest at this archaeologist near the Anachronia base camp, which of course requires Anachronia to be unlocked, in addition to level 70 necromancy and either level 30 or 55 archaeology. 30 or 55 archaeology, you'll be able to complete this quest and you'll have access to... Osseus. The boss does share kill count with the other Rex Matriarch, so if you have one kill count, you can use the boss portal on the BVM hub, although it does have its own collection log. The difficulty of the boss is supposed to be similar to the other Rex Matriarchs according to recent information, however, I would expect it to be a bit harder. The original Rexes have 190,000 HP, and this one has 350,000 HP. That's a big big difference. After looking around for a bit, I came back on the roadmap livestream where Mod Raman mentions this about the boss's difficulty. Sit in line with the other matriarchs, with necromancy being the, the weakness and damage style it deals. Um, but we wanted to do a little bit more of a twist. Uh, we learned from the feedback that we had from the other matriarchs when we released them. So we made this one a little bit stronger, a little bit more mechanical, but... Based on my own perception of boss difficulty, which I highly suggest you check out my boss tier list video, even though that's two years old now, I'm thinking this boss will fit in the upper section of the intermediate difficulty tier. Meaning most players will have no issues, you know, killing this boss, but it's for sure going to be a big step up from Godrush Dungeon 2, Queen Black Dragon, Corporal Beast although still a lot easier than perhaps doing a full elite dungeon. There's a good reason why I'm placing the boss in the intermediate tier as like a kind of expected difficulty from my end, because while there isn't that much footage of the boss, I am able to identify similar mechanics that fit or align with intermediate bosses in my boss ladder video. And no, I'm not trying to promote my other videos here. Let's just focus on the types of mechanics we can identify. The first being reaction-based mechanics, which are really common in RuneScape and... At Osseus, it's going to be a Tail Slam. This might stun you, this might deal a big amount of typeless damage or soft typeless damage, but it's going to do something, and you're going to be able to avoid it by simply moving out of the way or using escape or bladed dive or dive. The second mechanic that can be identified are minions in the form of baby dinos or baby rexes, you know, the premier club pet, and these might just stun you because there is a part in the video where the player is stunned, and the minions are attacking the player, so there is a chance they might stun you. This also means you're going to need to use defensives like Anticipation to avoid the stun to attack the boss properly, or use Freedom to break free from the stun mechanic. The fourth mechanic is my least favorite mechanic in the game, but it does make sense to, you know, add a level or layer of difficulty to the boss, and that is Prey Flicking. There are two attacks we can identify in the video, one being the ranged, like, spikes or bullets or rocks, and the purple magic ball. These are Raxus attack animations being reused, which is completely fine. Now, there's actually a reason for this, and that's that this boss is likely going to be something to help players transition into a boss like Raksha, which is going to be significantly more difficult. Reward-wise, we're getting another necromancy ring called the Occultist Ring, which has a 30 damage bonus, 5 prayer bonus, and has a 10% chance to generate 2 necrosis stacks with each cast. Hmm. This is going to be a separate drop and will not require you to upgrade an existing ring because there is no existing ring from Dagonoff Kings as there is no Necro Dagonoff King. There's also going to be a boss pet and you can get jail keys to get three additional baby Rex pets. And yes, you're watching, you're going to have to free them. Free my boy. He ain't done nothing. By the way, these are actually a trim comp requirement. As for preparing for this boss, there isn't that much you can do, as a Slayer Helmet buff will not work on this boss until the actual Necromancy upgrade arrives, and that's a future update. But there are some other things you can do. Other than the obvious things like to stock up on food, divine charges, and a bunch of other things. I do think it's worth noting that this boss is not poisonable, as it is immune to poison, and you can see this in the news post, by this icon. It's also immune to stuns, so there's no point in using your Cinder Banes, Weapon Poison++, plus plus plus, Blood Reaver, Requirements and Sticks, all those things, you know, the poison build 
on this boss. There are, however, two necklaces you can get yourself beforehand that are going to be a massive buff to your damage and accuracy. The first of which I'm not actually sure if it will work, but there's a good chance it will, and that's the Salve Amulet E or Enchanted. All you need to get this amulet is the Haunted Mine quest and the Layer of Tarn Razalor mini quest, and if you have a Slayer Ring, you can actually teleport inside and save yourself a bunch of time walking through the entire like parkour thing. Now, I'm not sure if this will work, but I am sure the second amulet will work, and that's the Necklace of Salamancy. Like, seriously, if this doesn't work, it's just super inconsistent, because it works on the other three Rex Matrix. Like, come on, like, th surely this will work. Like, there's a 99.9% .9 chance. This amulet gives you a 15% accuracy and damage buff against dinosaurs, in addition to a 3% rare drop boost. You're able to unlock the Necklace of Salamancy by trading at the skilling stations in the Dream of Iron, which requires the Extinction quest to be complete. This will be best in slot if the Salve Amulet E doesn't work. Now, if the Salve Amulet does work, the Undead Slayer Ability Codex and the Undead Slayer perk on your armor are both going to be a massive help here as well. A really good way of getting the Undead Slayer perk is to combine it in an ancient armor gizmo with Crackling 4 using explosive components, and depending on your invention level, you're going to have about a 50% chance to have a first time right, so the investment to acquire this perk isn't going to be all that high. With that being said, that's all we know about Osseus, and I'm looking forward to trying it live on stream. If you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe as I stream on YouTube. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace. The real reason you want the Necklace of Salamancy is to achieve peak runescape form, and Osseus is about to get 